Oh, he does not look happy. Hello and welcome back to Tarantula Zone. Today we're going to do a full collection tour of all the animals that we own. The first one being our very elusive Persian chinchilla cross cat named Shiro. Now Shiro absolutely hates me and adores Sam. I've heard about Persians being particularly lazy and only preferring one person over anyone else. This is so true. It's unbelievable. No matter how much I feed him, groom him, just love him, he's not interested in me. No, and in the morning he uh, would just jump up and start meowing, sitting on my lap, let me stroke him, he'll fall asleep on me with Colette. Uh, she'll walk past him and he'll just be like ba -ba 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 -ba, on her ankles. Yeah. Oh, there's a fucking one. It's like a T-Bondi flick. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that is Shiro. Next in our collection is our leopard gecko, Jikiro. We originally thought Jikiro was a girl, but as he grew, we found out that he was most definitely male. You can usually tell because they have this, um, almost like an arrow point in between their thighs, and that is only there on males. He is a hypo baldy carrot tail. Um, I think he's actually due a shed soon, so you can't really see his colors, but he is this beautiful bright orange with a little leopard print tail, and you can't see it, but he actually has a little leopard, leopard print beard as well. Now, Jakiro is unlike most leopard geckos, where he actually enjoys being stroked like a little dog. He greets me every moment I sit down at my desk because he's right next to my desk and he's just an absolute joy. We have one more reptile in the tarantula zone and that is our royal python Venno who is currently in shed at the moment so we're just gonna leave him be but he is he's a lovely little snake who's male I think he's about two years old now or yeah. one and a half years old um, but he's got a lovely temperament as most royals do uh, and we're sure to feature him in a video in the future at some point. Okay, now on to the tarantulas. For some of these we will show you clips of, but we won't show you clips of every single one of them. Some of them have already been featured in our previous videos, and some are just slings. As harsh as that sounds, they all look the same. So at the top we have our C. Darlingi and our C. Marshalli. Both of these we picked up at the Western Invert Show, and we will show you some clips of the Marshalli because it's beautiful. His abdomen was small when we first got um, him or her, we are unsure on that, but it takes out massive dubias and if you want a feisty, a, like aggressive take If you want a killing machine, yeah. get a horned baboon spider for sure. Definitely. Because they, they, you can't sate their appetite, they just want to kill everything, including me. Next up on our shelves, is our sling well most of our slings we've featured quite a lot of our slings in some of our previous videos a lot of them are brackies i think at least six yeah are brackies so not not too interesting but our prize gem at the moment is the haploclastus divamantha which is the lsd earth tiger which we got recently in a mystery box um and if you've not seen what they look like as an adult you need to go google them now because they look incredible so really looking forward to seeing um how how that turns out it's already got a massive attitude problem as we found when we were uh rehousing it um yeah. already biting um the bit of straw that we was using to get it out of Oh yeah, I forgot about that actually. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then it bolted, and it did not stop bolting round and round. And even now, um, we sat down, and you can just see it just going absolutely mental in there. One of the slings that are most impressive when it comes to making use of the enclosure is the Neoholotelli Insee. Within 24 hours, this sling had made a beautiful burrow, two entrances, webbed over the top. We now we very rarely see this tarantula but it is always hungry as soon as it, the lid comes off it just knows it's there you can see it's little tootsies out ready whatever you drop is just boom gone you don't see it 
Okay, on the next shelf is some of our juvies and we have two slings on that shelf. Um, we have four slings on this shelf. Um, we have our Brachypelma homori and our Brachypelma alphaceps. Homori at the moment is in massive primo. It just ate and ate and ate and now it's huge. It looks so uncomfortable. We're just waiting. We've been, I think we've been waiting for about a month now. Like, yeah. Just checking. It looks like a, a wall balloon that's been filled up too much. Mm. Poor Big, thing. black and shiny. And we have the Caravan and Versa colour, our OBT. Um, our Pamphobetus SP Costa. So this one actually molted in transit. A very ferocious eater, very fast, very reactive. Um, we, we, we gave it a... Was it a red runner that was about the same size as it? Oh, it was larger, yeah. Well, it was larger. It just it, it took the it took it down and it ate the whole thing, which is why its abdomen is like a million times bigger than everything else. Poor thing, but it ate it all. So yeah, pamphobetas are quite fast growers, so I'm excited to see this one yeah. grow. Um, we do have another pamphobetus, um, which is the fortis, which is up here along with the other slings. It looks pretty much identical to the um, species Costa. For now. For now. <laughs> Behind the Costa, we have the Pisultaria vitata. Again, tiny, made a brilliant web funnel. Don't really see it. Just like all the rest of our pokies, pretty much. It means they're happy. And on the right hand side of the shelf, we have our Salmopus aminia female, which is like a large juvenile. I think we featured that perhaps already, maybe in an unboxing video. Yeah. Um, we think it's in Primo, but we're not, we're not too sure. It, ke it keeps hiding away, and then we're like, oh, it's definitely gonna molt, and then it just comes out and starts walking around. We think it's hungry, so we're not really too sure. And then behind that we have the Avocalaria species Quatara, which we definitely um, shown in one of our feeding videos, which is a lovely tarantula. Definitely recommend getting one of those if you don't have already, or any Avocalaria slash Carabana, they're awesome spiders. Since it's last small, um, the green coloration has really come through mm. as well. It's, it's my favourite tarantula that we own, looks wise. <laughs> and then we have the Gramostora Pucrofess and the Brachypelma Classy. The next shelf down holds um, some very special tarantulas to us. This is my favourite shelf, I think. Yeah. For, at the moment. At the sure. moment. Soon, they won't be able to fit on the same shelf. So recently we did get a mystery box. We didn't film it. Everyone does mystery boxes. Oh, we've read them one. We, we, yeah. we'll, we'll do them like sporadically. Um, but we said no more mystery boxes, but Kat keeps buying them. So <laughs> one of them was uh, Terraforosa Blondie. Ju well, I want to say Juvenile. But I feel like it's a massive sling, but because of how big, obviously, <laughs> terraphrases are, I'm not really sure if it's a small juvenile or a massive sling. But Because you look at it, and it looks like a sling under a magnifying glass. Yeah, it <laughs> looks like a sling, but it's massive. <laughs> um, and next to that we have the Harpastera pulcropes, which is one of my favourite spiders of all time, pretty much. So I got that at the Western Input Show. Um, and what I love about this spider, which is quite rare I think for spiders that are aesthetically pleasing to look at, is that it's always out. Like it's made a sweet web uh, burrow, which unless you start actually kind of like poking around, you don't really realise how much is web because it's kind of camouflaged it all. But um, it's always out and it's awesome because I see my P. Metallicas like once a year, pretty much. And that's usually when we just check to make sure they're still alive and still in there or if they've molted that's not even them maybe we'll see some footsies perched on <laughs> um and this one's actually female as well so yeah. we're super happy about that if anyone's got um a bit later down the line if anyone's got some mature males let's, let's get them freedom definitely they're awesome <laughs> yeah um next is a spider that we featured in our previous video slightly is our gift from sam from Bugrams which is our Lassiodora Pariabana. So far since feeding, it's taken down everything instantly. A real brilliant eater. <laughs> yeah, so obviously we're gonna have a tea blondie 
and a La Cidora Cario Habana kind of growing up similar sizes. I think the the LP is a couple of malts ahead, but mm. it's going to be really cool to see the, the size differences yeah. and, and be able to see like how much of a difference can you actually see. Below that is just our Dubia colony and our Red Runner colony. You don't need to see them. No, well they're doing super good, the Dubia colony. I checked it the other day, there are so many babies in there, which is awesome. Yeah, they're constantly pooping out babies. Every time I go in there, they're pooping babies out. Here we have the Peaceful Terrier top corner. <laughs> so we got Metallica, Metallica, Tigrana Waseli. Which is actually barricaded itself in and pushed the substrate up against the door, so. Yeah, it's trying to make a stand. We should be a massive pain in the ass when we open that door. It's just all going to come out. So thank, thanks for that. Good job. On the shelf below, we have both of our Nando Chromatis. Um, one is definitely female. We're not sure on the other one. This one's about a malt behind that one. Beautiful. When we first got this one, this is the one we had first, it borrowed. We never saw it. It was down. You could like lift up the enclosure to check on it underneath and make sure it's eating, but we never saw it out. Since the malt, it's sealed off all those burrows, it's rearranged the entire enclosure and it's out a lot. Yeah, and it's, it's not fine. afraid every time I um, go for like maintenance or go to feed in and I take the lid off, it, it doesn't bolt, it just sits there. Very big, beautiful. And last on the shelf is our M. Balfouri. We recently rehoused this one because it was in a small enclosure and we never saw it. We thought that it may have malt um, because it would seal up its skull. <laughs> It, it, has, it has a skull inside, <laughs> it sounds really weird. <laughs> we would seal it off, we would, it refused food. So we were like, you know what, we need to, we both had a feeling like, we just need to see if it's okay, see if it's too big for this enclosure. So we moved it into this one and it actually hadn't molted. I believe it's in pre-molt because we found all the little um, mealworms that I've been giving it in hope that it would eat. Yeah. Pain in the bum. This one always wants to escape. You can always see it sticking its legs out the holes. Not that it can escape, but pain in the butt. Next shelf down, we have Amotomus Shite, which we've done a video on, which I'm sure you've all watched already. <laughs> we have Chromatopalma pubescence, which is, I think, one of the tranches I've had the longest out of this collection now. Um, and she is always out and always She's the star angry. Of... Oh yeah, so just always angry. So angry, and the star of the show in our like uh, feeding video actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she, she did good. Yeah. And then we have uh, another piece of terrier, uh, piece of terrier Rufalata, which we'll do a video on at some point in the future. Down on the bottom, which we won't show you because we've done a video on, is our Lampopalma violiceps doing brilliantly in the enclosure since we've done that big rehouse video for her. She's just a lot happier. She's she's built she's building up the sides, she's she comes out and we know because she poops all over the door like every tarantula does. Yeah. She's eating well and she's thriving. So I'm super happy with that. And over there off camera is our most recent um, rehouse is our Peaceful Terrier Formosa, and I'm sure you've seen that video too, where we added the live plant, I say we, it was mainly Sam, I just got it out of the pot. <laughs> With the live plants and him going on a little adventure to get his bark and stuff. And if you haven't watched that video, watch it now. You're bad. Again, it's very happy in there. We often catch it at night when we come back for something. Um, unfortunately, our banana plant is maybe dying well we're just unsure we're gonna yeah. leave it in there a bit longer and see how that one does but hopefully it's okay but we've also added some tropical wood lice in there some um, chucky pigs they're not called chucky pigs they're chucky pigs wood lice uh which seem to be doing well like the little cleanup crew um and then the formosa is fed i think two or three times taken adult dubias from the tweezers which yesterday I think I did one and I had to get my hand right in there because of how big the enclosure is but if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give us a subscribe like and comment let us know if you've got any of your favorite tarantulas in our collection or if there's any ones that you'd like us to do a video on thanks for watching and see you again next time